picture a little closer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, hi everybody. Uh, this is Simon. Greg, your second. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this is Greg, and this is Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought if how, how you were talking, you wanted to be first, so I no, just no, 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 no. Simon, we did it. You were second, though. I didn't insist on. Since anything. you insist on being the first guy talking, <laughs> I'm the only one who's like. I have to go. be the last. Okay. So that's like the last but not least thing. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's Brandon, and, um... This is the, the Entertainment Podcast. The BGS Podcast. The BGS Podcast. The BGS U, and then the U part is you, the listener. Right, so it's... I just realized that. Oh. Y-O-U. <laughs> BGS Y-O-U. Y-O-U. Yeah. BGS Y-O-U Podcast. Because the thing I think Bowling Green State University was all about, it was entertainment, <laughs> and encouraging people to work in entertainment, and... Encouraging podcasting, really. So as BG's most famous alums out here in LA, <laughs> it's our responsibility to podcast for the people that can't podcast for themselves. For the, people, for the poor, uninformed, Walmart shopping losers who don't know what a podcast <laughs> is because they're too busy listening to some redneck shit like Opie and Anthony or something. <laughs> But instead, they could be enlightened yeah, by, by... That's exactly the reaction I knew he was going to get. By our... Greg stuff. fucking loves Opie and <laughs> I like Opie and Anthony. Uh, they were all right. Before they were like, pay radio or whatever they're on now. Serious? Yeah. Uh, well, that's because they got fired from yeah. regular radio. Actually, like They couldn't twice. even cut it on regular radio. That's what that means. Let's Is that what happened with Howard Stern? <laughs> he couldn't cut it on regular right. radio, so... No, it's just guys like that just need to swear. Mm-hmm. So that's why. I don't know why the fuck they can't just not swear. Yeah, like us, we clearly have it down. You know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So what you're saying is we're too edgy for normal radio, so that's why we cast in pods. Mm-hmm. Cast in the pods. Mm-hmm. That's, well, it's a joke I used way too much in my previous podcast, mm-hmm. which is, wasn't with you guys. So you're a podcasting veteran. Is you. What Yes. <laughs> no, you've done way more than me. But then I, because I've always looked up to you, Brandon. I've tried to do. My I own. literally did one. I did, uh, that's I, all I did. But you had more episodes of your one than I did of mine. Uh, I can't remember how many me and uh, each one had. I want to say four, and I had three. So. <laughs> four sounds about right. I can't remember. We can go. I can go back to the uh, Facebook page. And probably. I think I can re-listen to them. Yeah. So that'd be interesting. That would be interesting to re-listen to. You know who had a good podcast that lasted a while? It was Emily Barron. Yeah, who'd she have it with again? The Emily Barron show with Alex Brunel. Well, yeah. That wasn't really that podcasting. Was radio, though. Oh, that was, on, that was on Real Radio, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was she on had, uh, WGT. I, I always listen to it on YouTube, iTunes, so. Yeah, she had it, they had their own like radio thing. But gotcha. yeah, yeah, That's lame, cool. then. I thought it was cool for a second, but. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny about that is that Alex um, was the one who actually got the radio. Like, he was trained for the radio, so it was really his time slot, and he made it the, El- the Emily Barron's show. Right. <laughs> so he, the host of the show was someone who knew nothing about how to work the radio board and wasn't really and didn't book the time slot. What would possibly be the appeal of listening to people who don't know what they're talking about? <laughs> Why would anybody try and get into that demographic? <laughs> All right. Let's get let's get cracking on, okay. on the entertainment news because people want to know what we have to say. Right. Um do we want to lead off at the box office or we want to do a story or two first? I don't care. You don't give a shit. Okay. You're a charge. You're just uh, um I'm just that cool guy in the corner who just sort of does his thing for this podcast. That's my persona. Okay. Well, then let's do a story it's not, first. It's not real life. Anyway, continue. Let's do a story. Let's talk about our first thing up here uh, is Justin Bieber. Mm-hmm. Uh, like all good podcasts, they just focus on Justin Bieber. Yeah. Um, and he's pretty cool, you know. I guess he just turned 18, or not just, but he is 18 now, finally. He's got a nice new haircut, I think. Yeah. I, I was I looking at some pictures pom- before. I like the pompadour. 
Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the new Morrissey haircut. Yeah. I'm in support of it. Is he uh, <laughs> still with Selena Gomez? I sure hope so. I don't know. I think that's just a, a match made in heaven there. He has, uh, his eyebrows look good. But anyway, this, <laughs> isn't, this isn't the story no, that no. Justin Bieber, right? No. Uh, the story is... Uh, he got pulled over. He got pulled over for a speeding ticket. Uh-huh. Um, so I, th- I thought I heard somebody say he threw like a huge temper tantrum. And that's what like got him the media attention. I mean, right for... You know, if you need an extra reason to just make a story about Justin Bieber. Yeah. Because the media is... That damn media always talking about Justin Bieber. Can you... Well, let's um, keep talking about Can you him. imagine if we were in a situation where you got a traffic ticket and then three strangers <laughs> from God knows where <laughs> let off their podcast about their <laughs> speeding ticket? Yeah. Imagine that's your life. I would have such an ego trip. I would love that. You already have an ego trip. Right. And imagine if I had a reason for it. That would be amazing. It would be, yeah, you'd be impossible if that was Mm -hmm. the case. But, like, imagine the bizarre world he lives in where he, I mean, this had no business leading off this podcast. This is really just (laughs) you doing a shit job of figuring out what we should talk about. But it leads to an interesting question. Thankfully, you have an interesting person here to turn this, <laughs> turn this crap into gold. Isn't that right, Greg? That's right. And yeah, Greg, turn our crap. Into fortunately, gold. <laughs> fortunately, you have someone here who just who can ask the deep questions, which is, how does one exist when you get traffic tickets that then are talked about by complete strangers hours late? When was this? Hours ago? No, it was a couple of days. Ago. Oh, it was a couple of days ago. Like, um, but yeah. That's messed up, right? Yeah. You guys don't seem to be that. Well, I mean, like, if you got a butt ticket, I'd talk about it. But would it lead off your podcast? Uh, maybe. I mean, well, you're in my podcast. Would it lead off your channel. entertainment-based podcast? <laughs> <laughs> entertainment, dude. one of our guys here. Got a traffic ticket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I thought there was more to the story. Maybe not. <laughs> There's really nothing. He got... He, got oh, that's, he was something. claiming that he was running away from paparazzi. And that's uh, why he had the speed. Uh, okay. uh, he was going like well over sixty-five. Ooh, which out here in LA, you it's never hard go, to do. You <laughs> never go sixty-five unless it's five in the morning anywhere. <laughs> um, you really barely ever go fifty over fifty unless you're like leaving. Unless you're like you leave city limits basically. Mm-hmm. So, um, so if he's going well over sixty-five, that's per, that's relatively quasi dangerous. Mm-hmm. And what was this, like the middle of the day? Yeah. Well, he's a bad boy. He doesn't, he doesn't care about danger. He is not a bad boy. It was through your neighborhood, too, right? Your studio He city. said he was at the 101 in studio, by Studio City. Yeah. So it was probably by the Ventura exit. Yeah. Probably by the Ventura and Lancashire exit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was probably pretty close to us. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I could, I, you know, I wouldn't have been able to, like, go around the block and see him, but, um, yeah, that's kind of close. He was probably going after a court or something. Mm-hmm. A lot oh, yeah, I think something else said that he was, uh, he's in the middle of doing the video for Boyfriend. Uh, or he just finished the video for Boyfriend? I can't remember now. There's no way that video hasn't already been made, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that video has absolutely been made. I've seen it. Oh, yeah? I was, yeah. Talk about that. That's entertainment. Um, I can't remember much of it, but it's, it's, uh, I don't know. He, the song's pretty good. I like the song. It's okay. Yeah. Not great. I mean, it's not like Michael Jackson off the wall, but it might be like whatever album was before Michael Jackson's off the wall. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> the answer to that question. <laughs> and I'm still hoping that he's going to be the next Michael Jackson. Which there was a lot to talk about. Your fucking group of friends made me think it. Like what? Zach and... That All Bieber that. would be the next Michael Jackson? Yeah. Oh, I don't know who would have thought that. Well, <laughs> I thought for a while that Chris Brown could have been the next Michael mm-hmm. Jackson. But that is definitely <laughs> not the case mm-hmm. now. But, I mean, I thought he was really talented. I just don't think that the, a white guy could be... I don't think he'll ever be the next Michael Jackson for one. No? No. You don't think Justin Timberlake's ever going to get there? I think Justin Timberlake's no. like the next one, but then people was going to be the one after that. No. Like like the, the, the backup, like the in the dugout kind of like 
if Justin Timberlake gets like horribly murdered in like an accident or something like that, then we have like another King of Pop to step up. The thing with Justin Timberlake is he's just very good at everything, but he's not transcended in anything really. No. No, I don't think he. I think he's like pretty good. He's one of those people who is very good at a wide ranging number of things, but like um, Michael Jackson was transcendent at dancing and transcendent at transcendent at making music and transcendent at performing. He was just he's acting way better than everyone. He wasn't transcendent, in acting, <laughs> right. you know, unfortunately. No. But like his acting roles are pretty comparable to Justin Timberlake. Right, right. He's, he was about as good of an actor as Justin Timberlake, which is not very good. Which is not, <laughs> very, good. not very bad. Right. They're better than like the Beatles when the Beatles act. They're, right? about, <laughs> they're about as good of actors as. I'm trying to think of like a real actor equivalent. Like Bruce Campbell? Like they're just <laughs> below. Like, like he can make a living at it, but not very well. Like they're just below like Ben Affleck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so, like, uh, let me think here. Who is just, like, an average, just an average actor? Not, like, a great actor, but, like, a guy who's, like, probably, like, famous, but is just, like, okay at acting. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin is, yeah. He's Alec, pretty standard, if you ask me. Alec Bal- yeah, Alec I think Baldwin he's funny is, in the, the roles that he plays sometimes, but he's never like... As, dr- as dr- being a dramatic actor, I'm talking. Oh, okay. Yeah, so as being a dramatic actor, yeah, he is average. Like, Justin Timberlake is good. Like, he, he is a lot like Alec Baldwin, though. But, like, in drama, he's, like, not good, not that good, but passable. But is actually much better at performing comedy. Mm. I think. So you want to see Justin Bieber in a comedy? Or, uh, or Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake? Well, Justin Timberlake has been in comedies. Right. And he's been hilarious in comedy. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's good at being funny. Mm-hmm. But as being, like, an actor, it doesn't really help. It, he's, just not that, he's just not that good. I'm trying <laughs> to think of even a better... Remember Chris O'Donnell? Robin from Batman and... From oh, uh, yeah. Batman and Robin. Batman and Batman and Robin. <laughs> he was, like, a... To me, what happened to him, he is, he was on a TV series. I want to say it was a Law & Order show, but I might be wrong. Anyways, <laughs> he is, to me, just an okay actor. Okay. Not bad. Not so bad. <laughs> the guy who good. played Robin is just an okay actor. That's a, he is, that's a he, profound statement. <laughs> he makes, he elicits no reaction, no emotional reactions mm-hmm. when you see him. Neither good nor bad. Pretty much every other actor elicits something. Chris O'Donnell literally makes you feel nothing. He's vanilla ice cream. He was vanilla ice cream. Yeah. And I can't think of an... I, I think it's something to be said about someone who is just a blank slate in their profession. And is neither great nor terrible, but almost is the middle holding pattern. You know what I mean? Kind of, but I, I have such like a warped view on acting that I only care about comedy actors and anybody who's dramatic. I just have, have no reaction to anyways. Yeah, like I guess like Sean Penn is allegedly a great actor. Yeah, but I find him deplorable. Like, I find him poor. <laughs> like, I cannot stand watching him. I think like Leonardo DiCaprio was good in The Aviator, but that's about it. He's not really that good. No. <laughs> He's not really a good actor. I thought he was decent in uh, Catch Me If You Can. I guess. But every movie I've seen him in, like The Departed and whatnot. He's a diamond. Newer, new <laughs> What's Eating Gilbert Grape? I think, I think we both overlooked What's Eating Gilbert Grape. <laughs> right. Well, up until... I, I mean, I thought he was... I actually thought he was a much more... He seemed like a better actor from, like, 93 to 90 to 2000, actually. Mm-hmm. And since then, it just sort of seems like he, I don't know, is in these supposedly great movies, these supposedly important movies, but doesn't seem to, like, do anything. Now, here's one that you might disagree with me on, but I feel I have never once, not at all, understood the appeal of Robert De Niro. Um, what's his appeal? Yeah. Um, Why does he keep getting roles that are, like, good roles? Are you talking in the 70s, or or are you talking about now? Both. Well, in the 70s, the reason he got good roles is because they were all 
most of those roles were directed by his buddy mm -hmm. Scorsese. 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 Mm -hmm. The thing with Robert De Niro is <laughs> what he was really good at for a long time was playing unhinged people uh, in a really cool way. He did. He basically was a leading man who had character actor type sensibilities, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Okay, so he's a character actor that a director liked. Yeah, <laughs> imagine like he'd be like a Steve Buscemi, but like uh, better looking. Yeah. But like if Steve Buscemi had been for ten, like for the ten years of his prime of his career, been the lead role. Think about it that way. Okay. That's like the role. That's the run he had. Would you agree, Greg? Yeah, I could agree with that. What I so that's what I think was what happened with De Niro, and then okay. from then he just sort of carried over right. that reputation. Okay. And he was just sort of, he was the standard '70s actor, male actor, where he just only played lunatics and only played people on the fringes. And I don't know. I kind of get his appeal, but I don't love him either. Mm. All right, well, let's move on. That's been probably the most boring 15 minutes of my life. I couldn't imagine ever wanting to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, here's an actor I don't like. Here's another actor I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should turn this podcast to the Actors We Don't Like podcast. No. <laughs> I, now, that's something I could talk about for hours. We could just, we could just, um, <laughs> we could just refresh. Brandon Simons and Greg's weekly shit list. <laughs> <laughs> it was on my shit list this week. You know, Tim Burton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I guess we'll go to the box office then. Um, so, so now we're going to the box office. Now we're going to the box office. But the thing is, uh, as opposed to last week, uh, where we had the weekend numbers, this week we do not. We are doing this on Saturday night, so we have the Friday estimates. So uh, there you go. <laughs> yes, um, the, pe so the, pe as people of out, the people out there can't see this, but what we can see is what Box Office Mojo is telling us right now at, what is it, 8.35 on a Saturday? Yeah. And that is The Amazing, Sp amazing Spider-Man pulled in $20 million on Friday. Almost 20.7. 20, 20.7. 20. 20. Yeah. yeah, bringing its total from, since it's, like, technically Tuesday release or mm -hmm. Wednesday at midnight release or whatever, uh, so far it's up to $95.7 million. Uh, which is, you know, it's still got Saturday and Sunday. Sunday goes into the weekend box office, right? Or no? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So then it's still got two days, probably the biggest two days, to make a lot of money. But I know um, that's not... Fr Friday is usually the biggest day. Friday is usually the biggest? Yeah. But if it makes, like, another $20 million in two more days, that's... I, actually, Friday, Saturday are probably, like, almost 50-50. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. The point is, it's not, like... A hundred million, yeah, it's a good opening, but it's not like, what did the Avengers open at? I don't know, but definitely more than that. I was wondering. It doesn't even matter. I think it was like 120. It doesn't even matter because in two weeks the Dark Knight Rises is going to open and it's going to make... You think? Probably, probably, probably almost two million. You think? 200 million. 200 million for Dark Knight? Opening weekend, I can see it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 135. What's the record? Uh, I think like... Record's like 40. Four, record's... Is it 140? I thought it was like 165. No, it's actually only 2.3 million. It's 2 million. Yeah. yeah. It's still the 80. It's the this Raiders. is all Raiders of the Lost Hollywood still, fudged books. and Raiders of the Lost Ark still own it. <laughs> oh, and you count for that. inflation, yeah. Totally. You count for inflation. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Raiders had been in 3D, they'd make they'd have made you know, 200 million easy. <laughs> um, yeah. I, what I, Did the Dark Knight have the biggest opening weekend? Uh, when it opened, I'm sure, but not anymore. Do you think it's? Do you think it has been um, eclipsed? I'm trying to remember if any of the Twilight ones eclipsed that or not. Actually, the Twilight movies might have might have done that. Actually, let me. Um, but yeah. Well, let me look that up now yeah. that I have a smartphone. Well, yeah, I'm, smartphone. Up my smartphone. I'm trying to look it up on our recording studio here, so I'm trying to make, <laughs> make noise and like. Tap anything? Let's make a noise. Top grossing internet 
I mean, get, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's clearly, like, figured it all out on this yeah. kind of smartphone. <laughs> yeah, she must be a hit at heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, then while they're looking that up, I'll go through the other ones. Uh, Friday, uh, the second uh, most earning was uh, Ted with uh, 10.5. Bringing its total to ninety-eight point one, uh, which I guess is just about on just a little bit more than Spider-Man has made in half the time. Uh, number three is Brave at six point two on Friday, bringing its total to one hundred and sixty point five, yeah, just about point six. Number four, Magic Mike, uh, six point one, uh, bringing its total to sixty-three point three. Number five is where we get uh, the other movie that opened this weekend, Savages, which made a uh, 5.6. Uh, and that's pretty bad for an opener. I, I, I don't know what they're... Hey. Five million? Yeah. So I, got, so I have the record, though. I have it for a weekend. I have it for a weekend, too. And it's uh, Avengers? Yeah, Avengers at um, 200 some thousand. Oh, really? I mean, million. Yeah. yeah. Huh. And then, well, it, way off. then it's <laughs> the, um, the last Harry Potter, then the Dark Knight. Then Hunger Games, Spider-Man Three, yes, and then um, New Moon. Here's the thing, though: worldwide opening weekends, uh, Harry Potter, the, the last Harry, basically the last, the last Harry Potter movie. I think it's the last Harry Potter movie. Definitely Hollis is the last one, right? Uh, yeah, part two. Part two. Yeah. Um. Yeah, part two. So that's the biggest worldwide. But yeah, um, Avengers number one, Harry Potter. Dark Knight, Hunger Game. Yeah, so... So you think $200 million for, for Dark Knight? Yeah, I mean, even... Maybe, uh, two, maybe even I guess. I, I don't want to... My estimate was just under what I thought the highest was. But now that I know the highest is higher, yeah. I could see 200 Maybe yeah. just under still. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, the last one was really crazy and everyone loved it and everyone got into Batman. But I don't think this one's reached the same audience. Nobody really wants it. Their, like, second lead didn't die, so. Well, here's my thinking on the reception of The Dark Knight Rises. Mm. Um, what I predict, I think that um, it, there's no way I can live up the expectations, and I think that it will probably be probably not well, gated, I'm sure but that people, I'm sure after its first day, it's going to drop a ton. Or definitely his first weekend. Well, I don't think I don't think money wise it'll be an issue. I think money wise, it'll, it, I think it'll make a lot of money. Mm. Um, but my thinking is that the reception by right. the audience. Nobody who wanted another movie that is exactly like Dark Knight Returns is going to get it from Dark Knight Rises. Yes, you mean just the Dark Knight? Is that there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, get Dark Knight, and then it's Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. And Dark Knight Returns is like one of the comic books, I think. Gotcha. I'm thinking of Batman Returns. <laughs> yes. You're thinking of Batman. <laughs> okay. You're thinking of Batman Returns. All right, right. That movie from 20 years ago. Right. Which also, which, again, <laughs> which which actually is interesting that you say that because that's a movie that was received very tepidly yeah. um, by audiences. It made a lot of money. A lot of people are like, eh, I don't know about this. And I feel like we'll probably actually be sort of the same with Dark Knight Rises because I feel like it's probably going to be totally very weird, very dark, very despondent. I mean, Dark Knight was like that too, but I think um, it might be so out there, in my opinion, that um, the standard, you know, bro who who that's his favorite movie, um, you know, like uh, Manning Boy '96, <laughs> well, might not may, might not be as into it. <laughs> uh, well anyways we're getting ahead of ourselves let's talk about this weekend's box office uh, like I said Savages opened at number 5 on Friday anyways um, number 6 was Tyler Perry and number 7 was the uh, the third movie that came out this weekend which was the Katy Perry 3D experience and this will lead into our next topic which part is of me Katy Perry Katy yeah. Perry part of me right that's the name of the movie part mm-hmm. of me um, so opening at seven, yeah, that's probably not great. Although I don't know how 
compares to like the was Justin it, Bieber 3D experience or the Jonas Brothers 3D experience. Was it just a live concert thing? Yeah, those movies. It was like a live concert mixed in with like documentary footage. Those about movies usually do. Why you know you should believe in yourself and be. Those like movies carried. usually do okay, but no one's. I I honestly feel like no one is going to like freak out or lose their jobs because that movie didn't do that well. Right. Um, Which I could pull up with. I mean, it's like a three, projected. Yeah, you know, it's a 3D movie basically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a 3D concert movie, so I don't think anyone really cares that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but would I like to go see that movie? Yeah, I would. <laughs> so more so than uh, the Jonas Brothers ones or the Hannah Montana. Or... Yeah, definitely more than that. You like Katy Perry more than those? Yeah, those folks. Yeah, I mean, I just want to see her like in 3D. Okay. Because it's just sort of like that. That's sort she'll of she'll wear all kinds of like outfits that like poke out at you. Right, that's what I'm hoping. Right. Um, <laughs> or that's that's sort of the standard joke about going to see right, a right. Well, is that what I don't know. I don't. I have no interest in really seeing it. I think Katy Perry's, you know, pretty hit or miss for me. There's a couple songs that are pretty all right, but a lot that aren't. Yeah. Uh, I thought the California Girls was like one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. The song was <laughs> the video, stupid, but the video. the video, like, everyone was like, oh, it's so funny and kitsch and, and weird. And I just thought it was. Is it me or does that song not rhyme at all? California Girls are forgettable. Because I, yeah, I guess. It might be Popsicle. Popsicle, yeah. Popsicle rhymes with unforgettable. Yeah, not really. <laughs> and for the future, let's try not to just sit here and think about something in unison so there's just silence. Um, At least, like, make an ass of yourself and sing it out loud so that they can hear something. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why does why it <laughs> matter, though? I don't why, know. why does it matter that it doesn't rhyme, or why does it matter that I think it's a dumb video? I don't know. I, uh, more that it doesn't rhyme. Yeah. But no, I get, yeah, that, that certainly doesn't matter. I don't know. I feel like much. it should some have some sort of rhyme scheme to it. I don't know. Hard rhymes are getting old. You know, you can't really do that forever. I know. I mean, but as as an award winning poet like I am. Yeah. Um, a published poet. A po- published award winning. Same. Both. Same thing. Not the same thing, but I am both. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I can say you know the poetry world you know doesn't rely on rhyming so much and you know the music industry at least in its lyrics have pretty much tried to imitate the poetry realm you know yeah. they always like pass it off like lyrics are the poetry and for some people they are for Tom Waits hell yeah I think he's a poet uh, Katy Perry or the whoever writes the Katy Perry songs maybe not as much does she write her songs? I think I bet they co- would answer I think, she, the movie. I think she co-writes her stuff yeah I think referring to any musician as a poet um I think they're few and far wrong. between. You're wrong. Wrong. Any, any Tom, you don't think Tom Waits is a poet? No. No. I don't even think Morrissey. What the hell I don't even think it? Morrissey is a poet. Yeah. And Morrissey is the best, the best lyricist ever. <laughs> and I wouldn't even. And I. What about like and Dylan? I would scoff if you go, and no, no, no. Dylan's not a poet. Dylan's not a poet. They're guys who write stuff to go along with the melody. That's not poetry. Poetry should have shouldn't be built around anything besides itself. That's not true at all. It's and as, <laughs> as an award-winning published poet, I can tell you... You've only been published. <laughs> I don't think you have any awards to speak of. I have been. I won an award when I was published. Picture didn't happen. The McCord uh, Poetry Award. I and I know it rhymes. Say, <laughs> I know this is a podcast, so you, if I say picture I'll, didn't happen, you should actually <laughs> say what it is. Instead of just throwing up a picture, because that would just be bad podcasting. But Well, you want me to just, like, at this part, put the picture of the poem up? No, but I, well, Good, no. Because that sounds like too much effort. The, th- the <laughs> thing is that you would take your award out and just I we just hear flimsy paper. It's not like for like a 10 sheet. Minutes. It's not an award sheet. It's then it didn't happen. Uh, when when my thing was published, it's in the corner. It says, "Oh, by the way, this is the winner of this award." Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyways, which I think I forget the name of the poem that won the award. <laughs> anyways, but, but no, 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 all, all poetry has has. A melody to it. All poetry has a music to it. It has a, it has a melody to it, but it but music lyrics are built around the melody almost absolutely. But so are regular good poems. No, 
They're not just well. They're developed. They're, they're everything. The melody, most of them, the majority the of them, melody is developed. Period. The melody is developed, or they they try to go with a certain pentameter or something mm-hmm. like. It's it's in its own it's its own sort of thing where they write it and they try to make it sort of have a rhythm to it or something mm-hmm. to that degree. But music has to be a 50-50 split between the sonic element of it and the lyrical element of it. To me, there's too much compromise there to really call any lyricist po- a poet. <clears throat> That's my argument. You're wrong. And then, <laughs> and what they tell what I learned in my schooling for poetry was, you have to spend as much, if not more, time compromising on the sounds and the lyrics and making it fit with the melody that you hear when you read it, even though you can't hear it because it's not being played on instruments. But that still that melody is still there; it's just less tangible. And you have to compromise a lot to do that, and that's the work that goes into making a good poem. So you're along with having to compromise for like a million other different things. So you're saying Emily Dickinson did everything she did with uh, thinking with music, with with some sort of melody, with a uh, rhythm to it. Yes, but she clearly didn't. No. Uh, How do you know? Because like there are literally just like two sentence lines. That's, that's it's, it's 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 all stilted. There's no real rhythm to it. It's basically just It's not a rhythm as you know it. It's it's, it's more a, abstract rhythm. I get that. But it's sort of it, it you can build your own rhythm when you when you read it. There's no set way to actually read a poem. If you write it the right way, there is. But Emily Dickinson wrote it in wrote in a way that you could reinterpret the way it's read. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm? Do you understand what I mean by that? Right. I know you're not going to agree. With no, me, no, I, just, I do agree. With I just want you to. I just want you to see where I'm coming. Leaving from. it open for interpretation. Yes. Enough where they can. Whereas, with, whereas I think for the most but, part with music, I guess you could make the argument with covers that that's not the thing. But like with music, what you write and what you perform, that's not that's not open to interpretation. Although I guess you could make the argument. Well, there are cover versions of songs and. No, I, I mean, the song is open to interpretation. Whether you want to listen to the lyrics more, or the guitar more, or what you want to focus on. Yes, but the package itself is not open for interpretation. Like, um, I mean, there's still ways that you can not interpret some poems, though. Either, I mean, you can you can take a poem that's pretty clear cut and like, you know, clearly about this, and can't go like, well, no, I think that's about something entirely different. No, no, no. I, but I'm saying more the delivery of it too. I mean, yeah. there, any any sort of art is open to interpretation. Mm-hmm. The more it, the more it is to me, the better it is. Right. right. The more. So you're just saying that the the way it's read, of the way poetry is read, is the only way that the music is in the poetry. Um. No, what I'm saying is that um, the way it's read can interpret the the rhythm of the poetry. Yeah. So. Therefore, that means that the sound, like the sounds of it, are important. Yes, but it's not as locked in as music, as far as how people can interpret. It can be. Yes, it and can that's be. what I was saying. You know, it can be. Some musicians can be poets if they do focus that way. If they do, you know, the way the same way some poets are musicians. I guess. And some poets, or some musicians, are poets. And and I just want to, I want to get off this because this is maybe the douchiest thing we've ever argued about. <laughs> not not just on the show, but just in our time knowing each other. This is probably the douchiest thing. Yeah. Yeah, Greg. Even even Greg. Greg, <laughs> even Greg, even Greg yeah. Moving on. Uh, to... The Olympics are coming up. All right. And this was the the reason we brought you in to do this, Brandon. The reason you were hired hired for, for this podcast for, for excellent money. Uh, it was because you were supposed to be our sports guy and know about sports. Yeah. And, uh, and beforehand, I was like, well, what's some sports events happening? He's like, no, I guess the Olympics are coming up. No. <laughs> I said, Wimbled- there's the Wimbledon final tomorrow, the men's finals tomorrow, mm-hmm. the, female- the women's final happened today. Mm-hmm. Um, Who won? Uh, Serena, oh, yeah, again. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, like, oh, was it Serena Williams? Like, as a joke, because I'm, like, I'm so far out of date that, like, that's the only... That's what's uh, know, but that's, so. So she's just like Tiger, what, Tiger Woods, where it's like the only thing you need to know about golf is that the one person you know wins. Well, here's the thing with the, here's the thing with Tiger Woods though is he hasn't won in a few years. Oh well, uh, yeah, I've heard that. I sir, but with tennis, it's actually very it's it's probably maybe the worst of that because like 
With baseball, you could probably be like, oh, hey, is A-Rod doing well? Because, like, you heard about A-Rod ten years ago. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, he's still, or, like, Derek Jeter. Yeah, he's still around, you know. Um, in basketball, like, players who were good ten years ago, yeah, they're probably still good. But tennis is so, you're good basically from the ages of, like, 21 to 24, and then mm-hmm. you're too old. Is Anna Kornikova still playing? No. No, she retired. So, Serena she Williams is 24 then? No, Serena's like 32. Okay. But what happened with the Williams sisters that made, that was, everyone thought was a terrible decision at the time was they would just leave to go do their, like, fa- work on their fashion company for, like, six months at a time and just stop playing. Mm. So everyone's like, this, that's a terrible idea because they're going to, like, start, their bodies are going to start to break down and they're going to lose all these potential titles. But what's happened is that they're able to withstand and still be good in their 30s, which for tennis is kind of unheard of. Although I guess in women's tennis, there's there's more of a history of players still being good into their 30s. In men's tennis, like Agassi and Sampras were good into their 30s, but for the most part, once you, once you hit 29, you're usually considered done. But... I heard uh, the same thing about ballerinas. Anything, anything, <laughs> any, I mean, anything with that, like, yeah, ballet, swimming, like, once you hit 30, it's like, you're pretty much done for. I mean, lots of sports, once you hit 30, yeah. you're pretty much done for. Now, is swimming going to be one of those things, too, or is just going to, you, the only name you need to know is, what, is it Michael Phelps? Well, there's the other guy, whose name escapes me, but his big rival, yeah. um, who beat him recently in, like, a trial run, and so everyone's like, oh, maybe Michael Phelps has some competition. But everyone sort of, I think, assumes that Michael Phelps is going to win. I don't know that. But like, such a douchebag. Michael Phelps? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. He, he, oh, he is, like, just not a good person. <laughs> like, who cares, though? Why, why does that matter? It's the same thing with Kanye West. Like, why do people care that he's a jackass? I don't know. <laughs> as long as they can do what they need to do, what they're being paid to do. The interesting with Kanye West is that it's always just sort of like, he's a jerk, mm-hmm. not a great musician. Mm-hmm. But no one had ever, no one ever said that about Prince. <laughs> no one ever said who he was just, a musician? Or who was, who was just jerk. as big of a, who was probably a bigger asshole than Kanye right. West has ever been. Yeah. <laughs> Though but, Prince is a little more out of his mind, like, as of late. Kanye West is just a maniac, though. <clears throat> but he's... Pretty much every real musical genius is is an insane person. Mm-hmm. So you really can't. You, I, you, it kind of comes with the territory. But uh, but yeah, there is there seems to be a re, like it seems to be more. I think it's just more like Kanye West is crazy in a more huge media time where gotcha. every crazy. I think he's just good at exploiting media attention. Yeah, he is. He is. He does run to the press more. You know, I don't think. Prince has ever blogged, nor I don't even think Prince <laughs> knows what a blog is or what Twitter is. So, no. although Prince's he, Twitter would be really hilarious, <laughs> oh, I think it'd be amazing. Yeah, and if he actually did tweeting from it, he probably has a Twitter, but mm-hmm. someone else tweets for right, him. Right. Someone who is more trustworthy around a computer. <laughs> but I think t- Prince is. If <laughs> just, Prince has, I just see Prince like spilling pop all over the computer. Oh no! If you imagine though, Prince like you know because you know all the song titles were like two was spelled with a, with a number. Yeah. And, like, he, <laughs> so you think he literally doesn't know like proper English grammar? Right. But, like, which is a very important thing when you're tweeting. By the way. He could, yeah. Well, that's, well, no, that's the, the thing. Yeah. That'd actually be interesting though because he could probably make say a lot more with his tweets because he shortens everything. Yeah. You know, so he he's could, got years of experience shortening things. Yeah, that, but that's just how he, that's just how he does it. But mm-hmm. like, I think his I think if Prince had a Twitter, there's no way it wouldn't be hilarious. Like, yeah. that's an art. Like, it almost makes you think of what other celebrities would have awesome Twitters. Uh, Shaq, Ernest Hemming. Well, Shaq, Shaq was Shaq does have Shaq one. was the first person to have a big Twitter. Right. I was just thinking, though, about Ernest Hemingway's potential twist. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which would all be four words with a period behind. With a, with a period. <laughs> Ernest, like, imagine Ernest Hemingway's Twitter. Mm. Who's some other famous people who would have awesome Twitters? Just off of their, off of their public personas that we know of. Uh, Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> they probably already better, know that better than like anybody else, any other Beatles. Well, I'm saying Ringo like during Starr the prime of their, oh, yeah, yeah, if the Beatles had, if the, all the Beatles had Twitters, 
John's would probably be insufferable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Paul's would be all about himself right. and just probably, like, bitly links to, like, pictures mm-hmm. he likes. Um, and George Harrison's would just be so infrequent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George would stop tweeting for, like, six months at a time. And then he would just, he would, his would probably, though, just be nothing but just, fuck, like, Indian... Uh, you know, like is, verses. And, you, and you know, he'd Proverbs just be and, right. he'd just be retweeting um, uh, right, Robbie. <laughs> right, he'd just be doing Robbie Shankar, you know, uh, TM stuff. And but Ringo would be the one who's like, "Hey, I'm not doing anything. All these other guys are working here while I'm hanging Ringo out." Ringo would have so like here's a bunch of pictures of like us just hanging out in a hotel room. Ringo, <laughs> Ringo's would probably be like you know the Rain Wilson Twitter or like yeah. like what we is think of, really good? what we think of as good Twitters, which yeah. is just sort of like just tweeting the like. Hey, have you ever noticed that sometimes you're in a bathroom and it just smells a lot like ginger? <laughs> and you're just sort of like, yeah, I'm going to retweet that dumb shit. <laughs> Rigo starts potential Twitter. Um, actually, yeah. I think really like historical... <laughs> making historical figures as Twitters could be a hilarious Historical thing figures like Lincoln and... Like Washington and stuff. Or? JFK. Well, not even, well, not even JFK. just that. <laughs> well, not even just that. Not even just like presidents and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, um, um, I don't know. God, force Any, anybody from Bill and Ted, all historical figures. Yeah. yeah. Napoleon, <laughs> Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking more. I don't know. Like celebrities. Celebrities. Not, well, not, older, that, that might, I, I'm just doing semantics between historical figure and celebrity. Right. right. Like, the, <laughs> like the type of that, like Milton Berle Twitter. Right, right. See, I think Foursquare <laughs> would be awful for like JFK, like, <laughs> checking in at the like, at the Hollywood Hotel. Yeah, J- yeah, JFK's yeah, JFK's Foursquare would probably be bad because it would just be all the times he was cheating on his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Frank Sinatra would probably have a good Twitter. Frank Sinatra would probably have a good Twitter. <laughs> Frank Sinatra would probably have a good. Uh, He'd probably have a good Tumblr as well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But just thinking about the uh, potential um, uh, social media aspects Mm. of historical figures, I think it'd be funny. Um, Mm. Who's someone else that could have? David Lynch would have had a good Twitter. (laughs) Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. (laughs) Uh, Like, you gotta look for those people who are kind of on the periphery of, like, big things. Yeah. Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle's Twitter. He would just have, like, a great, like, just porn web page that he runs. <laughs> right, right, right. Ayn Rand's Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what was this about? The Olympics. Uh, Let's get to the Olympics. We were talking about the Olympics. <laughs> yes, of course, the Olympics. I, for one, prefer the Winter Olympics to the Summer Olympics. I was going to say that, too. Yeah. That was, like, my only thing I had prepared for this, because I don't really watch either. See, I always think that <laughs> up until I realize I'm not watching the the X Games Winter Olympics. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I get kind of bored with the Winter Olympics. Well, I always get really... The Olympics, they're going to be boring. Oh. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I always get really excited for the Olympics until I realize that I always get bored with it. But right before, like, the couple months prior to it, I always get really excited to watch it, and then real it just comes back around. Yeah, you just like the opening ceremony. No, I don't even really <laughs> like the opening ceremonies. I'm just like, ooh, there's going to be like skeet shooting on today. Yeah, and I guess it, yeah, in theory, it's like oh, something weird each day. But there's so much of it that's just like, okay, here's some people who aren't as good as the three people that we need to know about, and there's going to be two hours of them doing this obscure thing. And I don't need to see how Romania does in shot put and... Yeah, you do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do like... I, I know this is like such a lame, stupid hipster thing to say, but the, my favorite sport in the Winter Olympics is the curling. Curling is pretty <laughs> fun to watch, I must admit. Yeah, I like curling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Winter Olympics, though, like, has great hockey, I think, is really fun to watch mm-hmm. in the Winter Olympics. Um because basically there's no stupid stoppages like there is in normal hockey games. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is good in the Winter Olympics? Just snowboarding? Another... I don't really watch snowboarding or skiing or any of that stuff. Um, Luging. Someone died at the last... Um, yeah, and it yeah, still yeah. wasn't very exciting. Bobsledding. <laughs> yeah. I, for one, like figure skating. 
That can be pretty good. I but then think, I also like the ribbon dancing shit at the regular Olympics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think figure skating, like... Um, but again, for like five minutes. Like, to turn it on and be like, huh, huh, huh. Not to like sit there for three hours going, like, oh, <coughs> shit, how is, you know, how is Bulgaria going to hold up against, you know, Luxembourg? Well, <laughs> figure skating is one of those things where it's all the personalities. It's not really the countries you're really rooting for. It's like the gayest male <laughs> figure skater or the biggest bitch female figure skater. <laughs> yeah. Figure skating is like maybe possibly the most personality dominated sport mm. in all of sports. It is all about it's it's you're almost literally judged on your likability. Mm. Um and that's what's cool also about figure skating to me is that it's it's a judge sport, kinda like with gymnastics where there's you there's really not an objective way to figure out whether you beat somebody mm-hmm. you know you you can't really score more points you get judged and diving is like that as well right. where like it's all on the basis of judges and the judges are and I, I guess boxing can kind of be like that too if it's not a knockout I mean me and Greg watched the uh, Pacquiao fight oh, a month ago where <laughs> Pacquiao was uh, Pacquiao lost because of judges that were probably drunk I don't know <laughs> But I think judge, judge sports are interesting. They're frustrating, mm-hmm. and that's kind of part of the, I think that's part of the interesting narrative about the, with the Olympics is mm-hmm. there's that sort of thing that can happen. I'm always terrified when they're doing the weightlifting that like a <laughs> shoulder is going to give out mm-hmm. or something just awful is going to happen. I forgot about weightlifting. I've never heard like the uh, yeah. I've always I, for, I forgot Deadlift about that. Or... Yeah. 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 The um, because I remember. I mean, that's always weird to me because it seems like if you can lift something some so heavy, you can do it. And or, I mean, is the goal to like push yourself to put to lift more than you thought you could in front of everybody? Yeah, and you have to hold it for like a certain amount. Okay. It's not just like you get it up and then go down. Like you have to hold it for like a good like five seconds. Okay. Um, some other good summer. There's wrestling. She cares about that. There's basketball. The pole vault. Pole vault. Isn't that a thing? Like, track, like, all track and field events. Yeah, yeah. The track and field. But the pole vault, like the the weightlifting, and something. One of those things where it's like, you know, you kind of know your limit, and you kind of know you have to set it before you go into it. Yeah. So you know, even if you get this, you're still going to be not first. You know, if you can't do whatever first does. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. But I do. Like, if your limit is 500 pounds, you know you can't do more than 500 pounds. You can try maybe 505, 510, something like that. Mm-hmm. But first place is at, you know, 520. Mm-hmm. You know, and you just know you can't do 520. So even if you do and try your hardest, you still know you're not going to get first. I guess I haven't watched the weightlifting competition. But you, you, you pick how much you're going to do before you start. Yeah, I don't know, actually. It's interesting. You always re- <laughs> that's the thing with the Olympics too. Is you always relearn how this shit is done. It's like, oh yeah, you know, also is fun in the Winter Olympics is speed skating. Oh yeah. yeah, speed skating. Speed skating is fun. So like also the the was it the uh, bicycling in that like really small? It's like the indoor track mm. where if you fall off, like you could really just fuck up your leg and just fuck up everybody else within like a two second mm-hmm. just like margin yep it's pretty fun <laughs> <laughs> I think is it oh no that's the the winter olympics where they're uh, the where it's skiing and shooting guns um, I think that's a, a James Bond movie I think it's like <laughs> no 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 it's sport. no that is a winter olympic sport no. Greg, I, I, I granted I don't know for sure, but I highly doubt that. I, I don't think that's <laughs> no, no. That's one of those things that was so ridiculous in that Bond no, movie because it's no, it, kind of physically impossible. That exists. I will. If find you're skiing it. and you shoot, there's going to be a kickback that Greg, throws you off yeah, your Greg, ski you pad. Realize, you realize, like, you need when you're skiing. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they some pole to like no, they balance ski. you. No, they, they don't ski, and it's like you ski to like up to the one target. You shoot, oh, and then you ski okay. to the next. Um, that's a little more plausible. <laughs> Although I don't know that's why. That's still impossible. <laughs> I don't know why you would, you would, you would There's put still those two no things way. together. There's still no way. Why not way. ski up to like a shot put and shot put? And why not, you know, do a 50-yard dash to uh, uh, 
skateboard. I don't yeah, know. There's, still, there's still no <laughs> way that happens. Uh, called the Military Patrol, the combination of skiing and shooting. <laughs> There you go. We got schooled by Greg, I guess. There we go. Biathlon. Yeah, the biathlon. Yeah. Interesting. Is that the only biathlon? Because doesn't that just mean there's two things? Um, but for the Winter Olympics, that's the biathlon. For it. It combines cross country skiing and rifle shooting. Cool. Well, cross country skiing is like the worst too. Yeah, just skiing. Like I remember being on like a, a third grade like ski trip, and like, all right, we're going to teach you how to cross country ski, and I was like, oh, skiing, that sounds fun, going fast and. Going down hills and stuff, and it's like, no, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go across this field. Yeah, that sounds impossible. <laughs> I've never, I've never skied in my life, yeah. so, um, and I probably will never be able to ski in my life because my ankle. But, yeah. But I. For those of you who don't know, here. Brandon has a robot ankle or something. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's a bad ankle, so I shouldn't <laughs> do anything like like skiing downhill on it because that could potentially probably mess it up. Also, I really just have no desire to ever ski. Yeah, it's like I did. Sur- it's like surfing. surfing. Like I, have I went to a rich school and they made us. Yeah. They also tried to make us horseback ride too, and I didn't do that though. Yeah, I yeah, I have no desire to do that. I wasn't rich. I gotta say that every time I said I was in a rich school. Mm-hmm. I did some skiing. <laughs> it was it was fun. I would if I would do it again, I would go more toward uh, snowboarding. Mm-hmm. I think it just like everybody who's under the age of thirty five. <laughs> it was just more like I with skiing. I felt like I could do it, but I. It never, like, fully got the hang of it, and I feel like snowboarding, I don't know. Just a little more radical, just a little more edgy. And, well, know. I think it's just more because it's, instead of, it's more of, like, similar with a, a it's skateboard. More, it's more balanced. Than, yeah. But I have no balance, and I tried to snowboard for a while. Like, I had, like, a shitty, like, $20 Kmart snowboard that, like, I took out to the hill out back and, like, tried to, you know, I, I set up, I got down right in front of the hill... Went like three feet and fell face first in the snow. And then like, oh fuck it, man! I had to unhook my shoes and everything, and then take it back up, and then rehook them back up, and try and go down again. And I got four feet and then fell over, uh, and it was just a pain in the ass having to take it off each time. <laughs> so that's the almost that's almost the only reason why I would like skiing more. Yeah, it's because you don't have to take them off all the time. <laughs> you know what's kind of incredible though is uh, Sean White. Who did he start as a skateboarder or did he start as a snowboarder? I don't I think he started as a snowboarder, and then became, and then did X Games as a yeah. skateboarder, and he gets gold medal. He's an Olympic gold medalist and an X Games gold medalist. Talk about someone who's good at everything. Like he literally, he yeah. is literally good at everything he tries. Just snowboarding and skateboarding. Snowboarding, and skateboarding. I mean, yes, they're kind of related. And, but and think, target clothes making. I feel like he's got, <laughs> he does another event too, but like he's someone who like literally will try to do something and succeed wildly. In it. I. Much like Justin I, Timberlake. I was just going to say, I think Justin Timberlake's much better at that than Sean White is. You know what? Watch Sean White act. I'll bet he's better than <laughs> Justin Timberlake. He's been in like commercials and stuff. I've seen him, you know, in, yeah. like, quote unquote acting. But I feel like he's been he's hosted SNL. He, he's had I to, believe so. He's had to yeah. host at SNL. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't seen him in SNL. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, me neither. Well, this, this would have been like... His his no, popularity on, was about like six six years ago when it, the height of his pop popularity. I think Sean it was White. more two because he then did won the he mm-hmm. won the Winter Olympics, but I'm not totally sure. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Moving on. Why don't we just keep talking about this? We got like five minutes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit for five minutes. Well, I guess that's where our final topic is. We just have the, the TV written down. That's our final topic. Yeah. But that's more so like one of the five things we try and talk about every episode. So just writing the word TV mm-hmm. isn't very helpful to us. Yeah. Well, I guess no matter how much you like TV, you at least can be in a conversation. I mean, I don't really right. watch a lot of like TV shows to catch up on TV shows. Although I am excited about um, the new season of Breaking Bad. Mm. And... Um, yeah, I think the only shows that I will watch while they're on TV is uh, that and uh, Mad Men. But this Did last you watch season, Mad Men? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. The last season of Mad Men, though, was uh, oh, I heard boring. it's sufferably just uneventful. I, I think I stopped about halfway through the third. I think third I, got episode, to, I got through the third back. season. Yeah. Oh, through the third season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. And then I stopped just because... 
it didn't seem like it was doing as much as like the first three. The first, third season didn't do as much as the second. Second didn't do as much as the first. So I kind of just saw it as kind of like eh. third and fourth seasons actually are pretty good. This past one though was just sort of like eh. the thing with that is like watching it week to week is horrible. Yeah, I and can bet. I think watching it... Whenever I watched those through the DVDs, yeah, one, just one after the other. Wa- yeah, just watch it in one, like, just plow through. See it as, like, one 17-hour movie. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah, basically watch it as one, like, 10 to 11-hour movie, basically, because going week by week, you just sit there and it's like, oh my god, stop what you're doing, we need to watch Mad Men. <laughs> and it's, it's literally, like, the, the people who watch it week by week are, like, insane, because it's just sort of like... Oh my god, there was just so much going on. And it was just like my brain couldn't take it. And it's like, nothing happened. Not, like Literally like two things happened. And it was just sort of like, oh my god, the things that got set up that we may or see, may not even hear about later. See, that's half how the time nothing gets, not, Half the time nothing even happens. Like nothing even just, nothing happens. Now, I know you didn't get to experience this because you didn't watch it till later, but that's exactly Lost. what it was like watching Lost. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I would not have been able to handle watching it week to week. It yeah. wasn't even a matter of being able to. It was being a matter of being forced to. Because once you're in, you're in. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine once you got to, like, the fifth season? Like, two episodes into the fifth season, suddenly it's like, i got to wait a week for each episode. There's no way you're not going to. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, I can imagine all of would have been the fall of 09. Fall of yeah, spring of 09. Yeah. Because, yes. Yeah, I think Lost ended around the time that you and I graduated yeah. college. Um, yeah, I can imagine that that was just a very frustrating five months in one's life because <laughs> that season kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, I still like the last. One. It was. I remember. But we were shooting that movie in in Bucky Manor when it was like the second to last episode. Oh yeah. Um, I remember that being like, well, yeah, we're out here, we're camping and making a movie, and like we have to focus on that. We're doing all kinds of fun things, but. Oh man, I just kind of in the back of my head wonder where am I going to go and, and watch Law? <laughs> <laughs> We're out in the middle of the woods, but there's got to be somewhere that's got laws. <laughs> I remember meetings for Beach Real and UFO. They used to be. Um, they used to be. Ba- they used to they be were based, based on around the night that Lost was on. Yeah, like, we can't do it. We can't. Uh, I'd be like, why? Well, what was it on Wednesday nights? Uh, when Lost was on Tuesday nights, they moved it to Wednesdays, and then when Lost moved to Wednesday nights, they moved it to Tuesdays. I yeah. Think. Wasn't it on Thursday? Oh no, we like planned it wrong. Like we like it was on the same night as Lost. And they're like, we need to do something about this, so they moved it for the next year. And uh, then that next year, they like switched it so it was on the same night. Yeah. So I remember, like when we first met, it was we were both into it, and mm-hmm. me and Greg, we were both into it, and it just happened to be the same night as the as the UFO meetings, the University Film Organization where we went to school. For all you people that don't know us in our history. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they don't know us. They know that our podcast is BGSU. Right. U as in you. Also, the, also the name of a Bowling Green sponsored film festival that I won my freshman year. Yeah. The BGS YouTube concert or contest. Uh, you're such a winner. I am a winner. <sighs> well, I guess we can uh, wrap it up. Yeah. Because so, this was the second episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure you're going to wait with bated breath to find out if there will be a third. <laughs> Ooh. Well, we've done it two weeks in a row. Uh, we've done it two weeks in a row now, so... Uh, I'm going to try and make them do it on Sunday so that we can have the box office numbers. Because I think that's, like, one piece of useful information that... If, yeah, if you're going to listen to this whole fucking hour of us talking, you should at least get one thing out of it, which is... <laughs> Oh, well, that movie did okay. That movie didn't do okay. That's literally, yeah, that's literally <laughs> why everyone would tune into an hour worth of No, but if somebody who's going to tune into an hour of us listening is going to walk away with that, I mm. guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's important to leave them wanting more. Actually, it's important <laughs> to leave them wanting less, which I think is what we're doing. And I think podcasts in general is about making people, leaving people wanting less. Yeah. That's why people turn them off halfway through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright, cool. Yeah. Alright, well, thanks everybody. This has been Simon, Brandon, and Greg. And, and Brandon. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for more. <laughs> <laughs>